Well, those of you who have been following my work for a while know that I am a big fan of greens. My Mighty Maca 30 Plus. Starting again. Well, welcome back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. Those who have been following me for a while know that I'm passionate about my greens, whether it's your keto greens or my Mighty Maca Plus 30 superfoods, which includes greens such as spirulina and chlorella. Now, this is algae superfoods that have been um, toted as the foundation for all life. And my guest today on the Girlfriend Doctor Show is going to help me go deep into it and explain to you why this is important. Algae, what makes it uh, helpful and why is spirulina particularly a superfood? Now, my guest is Catherine Arnston. She's the founder and chief scientific officer of Energy Bits. And she is an expert in algae for wellness, in algae for wellness, nutrition, beauty, biohacking, mitochondria, and longevity. Her journey into this fascinating world began in 2008 when her younger sister was diagnosed with breast cancer and advised by her oncologist that an alkaline diet would improve her healing. And from there, Catherine's journey is epic to the creation of these products and a tremendous amount of scientific research into algae specifically and sp specifically spirulina. So join me and welcome in my guest, Catherine Arnston. Hey. Well, welcome Catherine to my show. It's good to have you here. Yes, it was so great to meet you, Dr. Anna, at the KetoCon, and uh, and here and here I am. And <laughs> here <more>. you <laughs> are. I know. I get. I do meet lots of people at these conferences as a speaker, and have haven't been specifically at KetoCon for a few years now. There's a lot of people that definitely want my attention, and I wanted your attention. I mean, <laughs> I heard about you from one of my other colleagues, and you had come over and talked to my daughter at the booth, who was there. My daughter Amira and my she was like, mom, you really have to meet this woman. And um, so made sure that I was around to be able to connect with you. Yeah. And, and so I, I love and it. I love that you've done this research on algae and spirulina and chlorella. And I, let's, let's go into it. Yeah. I know you started this journey because of your sister was diagnosed yes. with breast cancer. Yes, yes. And um, that's why I was so delighted to be speaking to you today because your emphasis is women's health and and that's what got me started um my i'm actually canadian and my younger sister still lives in canada and when she was diagnosed with breast cancer by the way she's cancer free 11 years so very happy ending there um but her oncologist recommended she change her diet to an alkaline diet um, they didn't tell her what it was, but she said it would be very important for her healing. So her first call was to me, and I'm, I have an MBA and was doing international business, nothing to do with nutrition, but I'm a very good researcher. So I said, I'll find out what this alkaline diet is. And it turned out to be a plant-based diet because of the phytonutrients and the chlorophyll that build your immune system. She did change her diet. She went through chemo. I started learning about plant-based nutrition, saw all the things that, and all, read all the science about it. 
changed my career, uh, got a health certificate, coaching certificate, and tried to get people to eat more greens and found out it was so much work for them because they're heavy to carry home from the grocery store. They take a long time to clean, to cook, to eat. So I thought I got to find something that's fast and easy. Went back to look at everything I got for my, and finally found algae, which is the most alkaline food in the world, the most nutrient dense food in the world, highest concentration of protein in the world, endorsed by United Nations as the answer to world hunger by NASA for being having a thousand times more nutrients than anything else in the world. It's a multi-billion dollar agricultural crop. Um, my, that probably might be the first thing people don't realize is that algae is actually a food. Here's a picture of a spirulina farm and a, here's a picture of a chlorella farm. So for those of you who are so for those of you who are listening and not watching the video, you can switch on over to my YouTube channel at the Girlfriend Doctor and see these videos because um see the video and you can actually see the farm. I mean it's it's really cool to see this that yeah. it's such you know usually think it's the pond scum. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, or that's or you it. can get the supplement made in a factory and it's none of those. It's the most nutrient dense food in the world and they come in tiny tablets we call them bits because they're bits of food the blue one the darker one is uh, spirulina which we'll talk about in a minute the lighter one is just is chlor is chlorella which is just a green algae this one has two pigments in it they do completely different things in your body we call them bits by the way because they are bits of food again they come from the farm then we just air dry it into a powder and then we just press them into the into a tablet form so they are literally bits of food they may look like a supplement but they're probably closer to a nut or a kale chip because they're real food and this is really important to understand because your body absorbs the nutrients from food much better than from supplements. I mean, there are exceptions like your your Mighty Maca, which has, uh, by the way, has chlorella and spirulina in it. Um, but this is the purest form of just 100% spirulina or 100% chlorella. Um, and we're going to dig into the, the different things that they do. Um, but just again, so you understand how nutrient dense they are, one tablet has the same nutrition as an entire plate of vegetables, except you didn't have to carry it home from the grocery store, clean, cook, or eat it, and it's instant. I call it fat, you know, it's the future of fast food, because if you can swallow water, if you can, you can take five or 10 of these spirulina tablets in the morning, your hunger will be cut, your energy will be increased, your brain fog will go away, it's ketogenic, uh, it's zero carbs, it's the answer to everything. And, and women spend so much time looking after everybody else and we forget to look after ourselves. And so we're so tired and you know our skin gets dry and our digestion gets bad and we have hormonal issues and digestive issues and algae solves everything. <laughs> well, and I think this is really important because my audience knows at the Girlfriend Doctor, I'm big on healthy aging and the mitochondria are the powerhouse of our cells. And when we can work at the cellular level to heal, right, to improve cell to cell communication, to improve the flow of electrons across the cell membrane and the production of ATP energy from the mitochondria, right. I mean, that's what's happening. And when we can do that as naturally as possible, that's where we see the biggest benefit. And I think, you know, back to using what I liked is that this is foods versus capsule, although we will be doing Mighty Maca in capsules right now. It's a powder, but predominantly it will always be a powder form because I want people to experience drinking something really good for your body. And plus exactly what you said, your body absorbs food, you know, absorbs these nutrients as food and will digest them better, will assimilate them into your system better. So something definitely that we're on par with. Right. And um, I'd like to sort of help people understand what the two different algae are. And then I'd love to dig a little bit into the mitochondria health Great. piece, because what you're going to learn is going to stun you. Algae has the few antioxidants that can stop the free radical damage in your mitochondria. And I have the explanation as to why. And it's uh, it's and it's all backed in science, by, which, by the way, all the benefits I'm talking about, have talked about and will talk about are all backed by science. There's almost 60,000 thousand studies that have been done on spirulina and 40,000 on chlorella. It is the most studied food in the world. 
But the problem is scientists like to talk to other scientists. They don't know how to talk to us normal people. So that's one of the things I've enjoyed doing the most is digging into the science, reinterpreting it and making it easy for you to understand. So um, so let me just segue right so, into yeah. the two algae. Um, Let's talk. Spirulina. And why, why did you choose these two, spirulina and chlorella? Well, first of all, algae is everywhere. It was the first life on Earth almost 4 billion years ago. And we'll circle back to the importance of that in a few minutes. Um, and, and there's two main types of algae, macroalgae and microalgae. We're talking about microalgae. But let me tell you what macroalgae is. It's basically seaweed, and it, or also known as dulse or kelp. And it's only in the sea. And it's good for you because it has lots of fiber and iodine because it's from the ocean. But it has virtually no nutritional value. You can eat a entire bag of kelp noodles for five calories because there's virtually nothing in it. That's not what we're talking about, but it does belong to the algae family. We're talking about microalgae, which is microscopic in size, and you can't see it. Something like a million um, cells of microalgae could fit on the head of a pin. And microalgae is everywhere. Macroalgae is only in the ocean. Microalgae is in the lakes, the rivers, the streams, the soil, your swimming pool, your aquarium. It's everywhere. There's tens of thousands of strains. There's blue, green, green, red. But the only two that are harvested as food crops, and it doesn't matter whether you get that it from uh, Whole Foods or from us, are spirulina and chlorella. Spirulina and chlorella, again, are not from the ocean. They are harvested as hydroponically as food, a uh, food veg. It's a type of vegetable. It's like tomatoes or lettuce, except it has a thousand times. So the reason why we sell spirulina and chlorella is because those are the two that are most nutrient dense. Everything else is pretty much toxic. Uh, and it's very important that you get your spirulina and your chlorella from a safe source like us, because um, algae will grow, will absorb whatever's in the water. So you don't want it from the ocean or from lakes because there's microtoxins in there. We grow ours in triple filtered spring mountain water in Taiwan, and then we air dry it without high heat, which is going to be very important when we come back to mitochondria, because high heat kills enzymes. And there's a very important enzyme we're going to talk about called superoxide dismutase, which is a big mouthful, also known as SOD, but it stops free radical damage uh, in your mitochondria. All the other algae companies use high heat to dry their algae. So they're killing that enzyme. They're killing all of the enzymes. We don't use high heat because when I started the company, it was to really make a difference in the world and people's health. So so anyways, that so we chose spirulina and chlorella because they are the two nutrient dense um, algaes that are around and available and have been grown for 50 years in Asia. So the company that grows it for us, they've been doing it for 50 years. This is, I tell people, algae isn't new. It's just new to you. And, you know, just like you probably didn't know about kiwa or chia or maca um, or CBD until recently, or even collagen, uh, until somebody educated you about it. They've, these are uh, food groups that are, are have been used for centuries in other countries. Algae has been used for centuries, but nobody until we came along, until I came along. Well, how has it been used in other cultures and what types of medicinal foods? I know the reason that I put it in Mighty Maca was for the alkalinizing benefit and mitochondrial support. Yeah. Well, spirulina in particular is, is they're both the most alkaline food in the world. And we could talk about the alkalinity. The Egyptians used to wrap themselves in it. Uh, you know, so that's 2000 years ago in Mexico. Um, they used to, this is, was their main source of protein, which, you know, I want to get to spirulina next because it has the highest protein in the world. Not only is it the highest protein in the world, all of the protein is already in amino acid form. So there's nothing for your body to have to do to break down, to gain access to the protein, which is quite different from animal protein. Animal protein is all bound up and it can take days for it to be broken into amino acids. Then you have collagen protein that are in clusters of aminos called peptides, but algae has individual aminos which means they are absorbed into your body faster than anything else. So they're more bioavailable. And with spirulina, it is a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. So there is nothing again for your body to break down to gain access to the aminos. It has three times the amount of protein as steak. 
Um, that's why the United Nations has endorsed it as the answer to world hunger. And in Asia, Japan, all the Asian countries, but particularly Japan, they don't leave their house without taking chlorella algae, probably spirulina too. But uh, And they are world recognized for having the best longevity, lowest cancer rates, lowest obesity rates, and great skin and hair. And I attribute some of it to, to the algae. So spirulina is a blue-green algae. We call ours energy bits. Uh, we also have a second brand that I call beauty bits. And the reason why there's two spirulina is because, you know, I started the company because of my sister. So women's health has always been important. But I noticed that women weren't buying the spirulina after. And so my girlfriend said, you've got to give it a cute name and put it, package it in pink. And because it has more collagen than collagen powder, and it does have so many antioxidants that stop free radical damage, and it does um, boost your skin and hair. I have no Botox and I have no wrinkles and I eat this stuff every single day. So and how old are you? You're not going to believe this, but um, I'm turning 66 in three weeks. So wow. I am currently 65. So I am I am living proof. Yes, you look stuff, amazing. The stuff works, right? And so I want to make sure everybody else gets the same benefit. So they're and have you done your biologic age? Have you done like true age or any of those? No, I I, I haven't. But I I'm uh, I will tell you I I had to get some blood tests lately done lately, and one of them that, that they did was the C reactive protein, which measures the level of inflammation. Okay. Uh, my inflammation was so low, it barely made it even on as a, on the register. Perfect. A and, and I'm not surprised because I eat so much algae. It, it is, and we've had um, scientists on NASA missions who get their blood tests every day because they're constantly testing for efficiency and, and efficacy when people are in, in space or in the sea. And same thing, the blood tests come back with the lowest inflammation period. And we're going to talk about that when we get to mitochondria, because this stuff stops inflammation flat out. And I've got the blood work to prove it from me. <laughs> nice. Nice. So, yeah. So, so spirulina is very energizing, which is why I called it energy bits. Um, and it's energy energizing physically, mentally, it helps you uh, focus. It's, and it's not uh, a stimulant. There's no sugar and there's no caffeine and there's no chemicals. So it's not like coffee or any kind of anything that will give you a rush or any shakes. It's a very steady energy. You might not even notice it unless you're working out. And, and then if you are, you might run faster or further and not even notice it. It's just the way we describe it is you just feel fresh, feel like you just had a great night's sleep. And that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. So if you take yeah. Some, most people take the spirulina in the morning because that's when you're hungry and that's when you're tired. You could have it as a meal replacement if you took 20, 20 tablets or 30. Remember, there's one calorie per tablet and they are effortless and they give you all the nutrition. You could if you wanted, we don't encourage it, but you could live on it forever. It gives your body absolutely everything that you need. Um, I even did an analysis and found out that the spirulina it has virtually the same nutritional profile, especially in the amino acids, as mother's breast milk. And we'll send you the chart so you can take a look at that. Interesting. No, yeah. I'm not. I had not heard that. So, well, you know, uh, you know, you spend 12 years studying algae. Yeah. You, know, you uncover a lot of really. Well, as an obstetrician, things. you know, and a big breast milk advocate, so yeah. that's really yeah. cool. We'll, we'll be sure we send you that. So it's not just the same aminos; it's in the same proportions. And while we're talking about breast milk, the only place that has more GLA, which is an essential fatty acid, than mother's breast milk is spirulina. And the reason why mother's breast milk has so much GL, gamma-linic acid in it is because it's essential for the baby's brain development. Now we can't have mother's breast milk after the age of two. So this is your second best um, source of, of uh, GLA after mother's breast milk. And it has all these other fabulous nutrients in it. So spirulina satisfies your hunger, gives you energy mentally and physically, um, uh, gets you out the door, uh, and it has all the rich um, uh, minerals, all the electrolytes. So it can replace many of your other multivitamins that you're taking, biotin, a multi. So it will save you time um, and, uh, and money because you can clear out a lot of those vitamins, which, you know, clutter your countertop and all expire at different dates. So anyways, that's spirulina, blue-green algae, 
uh, definitely in the bacteria category. It's called a cyanobacteria. And this will become important in a few minutes when we talk about the mitochondria. The second algae is chlorella, which is a green algae. And it's called green algae because it only has one pigment in it. See the difference in the color? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is chlorella. This is spirulina, which has a blue pigment in it called phycocyanin, which has other healing properties we probably don't have time to get to. But chlorella's claim to fame is that it's a wellness algae. Spirulina is an energizing algae and, and nourishing. Chlorella is um, cleansing and a wellness algae. How does it do that? It has the highest chlorophyll in the world. Spirulina has the highest protein in the world. Um, and also chlorella has a hard cell wall that attaches to toxins. Spirulina has no cell wall. Start to see how they're, they're differing. Yeah. So yeah. chlorella you say, well, chlor chlorophyll, what's so important about chlorophyll? Well, first of all, the chemical composition of chlorophyll is virtually identical to your blood. There are a few, the only main difference is that chlorophyll has magnesium in the middle and your blood has iron, which is what carries oxygen in your blood. So number one, what does chlorophyll do? It builds your blood. Up until even as recent as World War II, they always used chlorophyll to help people heal from um, injuries, surgeries, disease. And plus it the, also yeah, kills toxic, bacteria. toxic gas, right? Yep. It's a chelator. Yes, yes. Well, chlorella is a chelator and chlorophyll is very cleansing. Right. So number one, chlorophyll builds your blood. Number two, turns out that chlorophyll is a fat-based pigment. Why is that important? Because when we get to this talk about mitochondria, all of your, your health issues start at the cellular level and it's the cell walls as well as the mitochondria inside the cell. Now to keep those cell walls healthy, you need healthy fats. Most people are using omega-3 and vitamin D or A, but you could also use chlorophyll because it's a fat-based pigment. And so the way I describe it to people is, you know, uh, when you have dirty windows, you can't see out and sunlight can't get in. And when your cell walls are not permeable, nutrients can't get in and toxins can't get out. So chlorophyll is very cleansing to facilitate that. So that's number two, build your blood and build your, heals your cell walls. Number three is it's very, it kills bacteria in your colon, in your breath. Um, it topically, they use it for killing bacteria. Um, it's very important. And chlorella has, again, the highest chlorophyll in the world, 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula. It has 25 times more chlorophyll than even liquid chlorophyll. There is nothing in the world with more chlorophyll than chlorella, which is why it's called chlorella. <laughs> um, but the other healing property with chlorella is that it attaches to toxins. It's because of this hard cell wall attaches to toxins, lead, mercury, radiation. It's a chelator and pulls them all out. Alcohol. Uh, Does it help with mold toxins? Mold toxins because they they release microtoxins into your body. So it, it pulls out everything. Lime, um, it's unbelievable. And it was used by the United Nations after Chernobyl. It was used in uh, after the Fukushima disaster. We work with biological dentists who use it to pull out mercury. Both they take it and the patients take it because there's fumes from the mercury um, when they're removing those fillings. So it's very, very chelating. Now, if you don't want to use it for detox purposes, that's fine. You could just, just use it for the wellness benefits because in addition to the high chlorophyll and the hard cell wall that pulls out toxins, it has um, your daily requirement of a vitamin called K2 that removes excess calcium. And this is important because when you have excess calcium, it lodges in your soft tissue, your skin, so it causes wrinkles, your, your blood vessels and your heart so it causes uh, arteriosclerosis. That's the hardening of the arteries. And it's hardening is the calcium. Uh, kidney stones are calcification. So K2 moves all that excess calcium and puts it into your bones. So it also helps prevent um, osteoporosis, which of course women are 80% um, of osteoporosis. Um, well, so I think it's really important to emphasize. So one of the things I will say, we supplement with vitamin D. Vitamin D says deposit calcium. Vitamin K says where. And the type of K that we use in yes. our uh, vitamin D supplements, K2. And I think that's a critical piece. So adding chlorella for that too, especially yeah. if there's osteopenia, osteoporosis yeah. is another, um, another win. Yes. So most people, because it's a wellness detoxing algae, we recommend you can take either one of them anytime a day together alone with food instead of food. Um, 
take, but take the chlorella, which we call recovery bits because it helps you recover your health, recover from your day, recover from sports, recover from drinking, but take it for sure before bed. Why? Because when you are sleeping, while you're getting your beauty rest, your body is like the cleanup crew. It's getting in there, uh, pulling out toxins, repairing cells. Um, there's, uh, and we're gonna talk about some of the other important nutrients like melatonin. Yes, melatonin not only helps you sleep, but it is also a repair antioxidant. And you're, uh, they're realizing that um, melatonin is used and created by all of your mitochondria, not just by your pineal gland, and they've done tests to find out that the gut has 400 times more melatonin than the pineal gland. This helps to explain why melatonin is so important, because not only to help you sleep, but while you're sleeping, it has all of these repair functions. Uh, otherwise, there wouldn't be so much in your gut. So, yeah, it, so it, uh, absolutely. And, and one of the things that we supplement with, I don't like it every day, all the time with melatonin, but also understanding the repair mechanisms, melatonin at high dosages, like 20 uh, milligrams has been shown to be immune supportive for yeah. breast cancer clients. And so clients with autoimmune disease, cancers, we can actually go up in that dose too. Again, it's reparative benefits. You know, Catherine, I just created a, a nighttime sleep formula called Night Z's. It does not have melatonin in it. That's separate because the goal was however many hours of we sleep, we want it to be as restorative deep sleep as possible. Yeah. So it has maca, it has um, tart cherry, it has hops and kudzu. So other amazing plant superfoods that also yeah. help support SOD. That's a good combination. I say while we're sleeping, let's do as much repair work oh, and regenerative yeah. work yeah. as we can. It's like having the, so, the repair crew uh, fixing all the, you know, the highways, the byways. Yes. Yeah. And it, I can't overemphasize enough, and I'm sure you do too, how important sleep is. And you want yeah. high quality sleep. So not only does chlorella has have the highest concentration of tryptophan in the world, which is the precursor to melatonin, it has the highest melatonin in the world. It has unbel it, it's off the charts with melatonin. It has, you mentioned tart cherry juice, has 28,000 times more melatonin than tart cherry juice. And I have the lab tests to prove it. And I, when the lab test came back, I said, you gotta run these labs again because I that's off the charts. I, I can't believe it, but true enough, uh, it does. And we're, we'll same with SOD and we'll talk about that in a minute. So generally, uh, and it also stimulates peristalsis, which is the bowel movement and getting rid of all the stuff that you don't need is uh, just as, as, as important as getting all the stuff that you do. So they work harmoniously together. Spirulina in the morning for energizing you, your body, your brain, the mitochondria, which we're going to talk about in a second, and chlorella, which is very cleansing and detoxing detoxing and restorative to help with your sleep and your bowel movements and getting rid of all the, the junk. You know, I tell people, if you didn't take your garbage out for three or four days at your house, it would start to get pretty smelly. Well, that's what chlorella does. It pulls out the stuff. And by the way, even if you lived in a bubble and weren't exposed to any toxins, although the average, um, they say the average adult in America now has 800 toxins in their body. But even if you lived in a bubble, your body constantly is regenerating its cells. We have 30 trillion cells and dead cells are toxic. They clog up your lymphatic system, attract bacteria. When we say senescent cells. We want to senescent remove cells. senescent exactly. cells. I definitely want to get in with the time we have left yes. on mitochondria, okay. mitochondrial function as the powerhouse yes. of our cells and how that makes a difference and how alkalinity, like the whole functional piece of alkalinity, because we're not necessarily talking about the pH of the blood because we're going to be alkaline. We'll rob Peter to pay Paul, but there's this delicate balance. And we want to yeah. support that delicate balance and homeostasis as much as possible. So can you address that, please? Well, I'll talk about that and then we'll get into the mitochondria. So um, this was one of the reasons why my sister's oncologist wanted her to have an alkaline diet because uh, cancer can only exist in cells that are acidic. And this was a discovery made by the um, German scientist, his name is Otto Warburg. He won a Nobel Prize, by the way, for discovering this back in the 40s. Um, and so your cells, there's, there's this, first of all, what is alkalinity? Well, there's a scale of zero to 14 uh, and low zero is um, uh, acidic and 14 is very alkaline. There aren't any foods that are higher than algae in terms of alkalinity. And for maximum 
um, regenerative capability, oxygenation, cell communication. Your cells need to be just slightly alkaline, 7.1 to be specific. And when they become more acidic, which happens from stress and eating, you know, acidic foods like sugar, which is terrible processed foods, anything white, it can change, it can contribute to the acidity of the cell, which causes less oxygen to be available, which contributes to more free radicals being damaged, which gen, which cause your mitochondria to get damaged, which then real causes your cell communication to slip, which now allows cancer to take hold. So your number one, um, um, so a way to make sure you stay healthy and can prevent cancer is making sure that your cellular structure is and your diet is slightly alkaline. Uh, and this will really uh, go a long way to help with your health. But in addition to having the alkaline diet, you need to be looking after those little mitochondria. As you said, they generate the energy for your cells. And you say, well, what exactly is that? What does that mean? Well, there's something called ATP, which when you eat food, your, these mitochondria convert the food into cellular energy. Um, and that energy fuels your sleeping, your walking, your talking, your heartbeat, uh, your thinking, your lymphatic system. Everything comes down to the energy from the mitochondria. And you go, well, how, how important can mitochondria be? Well, consider this. There are 2 million mitochondria per cell in your brain. Think of that's a 2 million per cell. That's crazy. They're realizing Alzheimer's disease. Oh my gosh. And how, if there's disease. that many per cell in the brain, how many in the heart? Well, the heart is actually lower. It's 5,000, 5 to 7,000 per cell. But here's something that your, your, your community will really love is because the second highest after the brain is actually women's eggs. They have 600,000 mitochondria per cell in your eggs. Why? Your highest number of mitochondria are where your highest energy needs are. And it takes a lot of energy to make another human being. And it takes a lot of energy to be thinking. Uh, your muscles are also about 5,000, same with your other organs. Your regular um, fat and skin cells have an average of about 100 to 1,000 tops. But anyways, so, so your mitochondria are very crucial to your health. So why are so why do they, you know, why do they get damaged so easily? I'm gonna show you. This is a picture of a cell. And inside the cell is your nucleus, with, which has all your regular DNA. And then you have these little peanut shaped things that are your mitochondria. Remember, there could be 2 million of these per cell in your brain. Now inside the mitochondria, this is exactly where the ATP is produced. But guess what? That's also where your mitochondria DNA are located. So your mitochondria DNA are located ringside to where the ATP is produced. And guess what happens when ATP is produced? Free radicals are also produced. Free radicals are like sparks from a fire. And if you've ever sat too close to a fire, a bonfire, a fireplace, sparks fly and they can burn you. Well, that's exactly what's happening to your mitochondria DNA. They are so close to where all the ATP is produced and where all the free radicals are being, being produced. Their average lifespan of your mitochondria, they have their own DNA, is 10 to 30 days. While your regular DNA lasts a lifetime. Why? Because it's way over here in the cheap seats. It's nowhere near where all the ATP is produced. So it can last an entire lifetime. So what happens when your ATP, your, your mitochondria DNA get damaged? They become mutated. They give off the wrong cellular communication. They die. And so, and I, I control, I compare the mitochondria DNA to air controllers at an airport. If the air controllers were off their game, planes would crash, right? They have to be right on point. When your mitochondria get damaged, your your health damage your health crashes just like a plane would crash and so it's very very important to keep those mitochondria dna healthy so why do they get damaged so quickly well like i said there's free radicals being um, released during the production of atp and there's two ways that you can stop the damage one is to reduce the number of uh, free radicals being produced and a keto diet helps that because it reduces, it reduces the number of free radicals, but even better is fasting and algae. Fasting and algae produce virtually zero free radicals. So number one, 
is with the type of diet that you have. When you reduce the number of free radicals being produced, then you have less damage. It makes sense. The other way you could you could protect your mitochondria is to remove the free radicals, right? That's what antioxidants are for, is to remove free radicals. But here's the problem. Mitochondria are the only cell structure in your body, the only one, and I will explain why in a minute, that have two membranes. It has the regular outside membrane that you have on every single cell in your body that have what's called porins that allow antioxidants and proteins in and out. But there is a second inner membrane and nothing can get in there to stop the free radicals except these four an antioxidants I'm gonna tell you about. One of them is glutathione. The second one is melatonin. The third one is superoxide dismutase, also known as SOD. And the fourth one is chlorophyll. And guess what? Algae has the highest concentration of all four antioxidants in the world. It has 1,400 times more glutathione than meat. It has 28,000 times more um, uh, uh, melatonin than um, the... Um, this tart cherry juice. It has 7,000 times more SOD than cabbage. And it has 500 times more chlorophyll than arugula. There is nothing in the world with more of these four antioxidants than algae. And the most important one is the one called superoxide dismutase because the most damaging um, free radical is called superoxide. And what superoxide dismutase does is it turns that free radical into harmless water. Ta-da! It's like the fireman. They come in, put out the fire, and your mitochondria are saved. Now, well, your body... it's also associated with longevity, right? That free radical protection, longevity, cellular repair, fighting off senescent cells. Exactly. All those pieces. Well, that's leading up to this next chart. Now, our bodies create glutathione, melatonin, and superoxide dismutase. Lots of it. Lots of it. It's great until you hit 30. And then it crashes to virtually nothing. And you know what else crashes? Your mitochondria. Because at this point, when you hit 30, you stop having the glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and melatonin to protect you from all that damage because it's not being created anymore. That's what causes aging. We can reverse that entire process with algae because it has the four uh, antioxidants that can get in there that your body isn't creating and that is almost impossible to find with food. But here's the trick. It's not just any algae. It has to be raw algae because things like that superoxide dismutase is an enzyme and high heat kills enzymes. So uh, most other algae companies, they use high heat to dry their algae. The superoxide dismutase and other enzymes are killed. They're in ineffective. They're inactive. You could eat a room full of them and no nothing would get into your body. But we don't use high heat. You could also get um, frozen spirulina because, again, the no heat has been used on that. So you're, um, you're, you're getting all the superoxide dismutase that you need. So that's one of the reasons why on the short term... <clears throat> Algae is great because spirulina gives you energy for the day. It gets you out the door. It satisfies your hunger. It gets you uh, energy mentally and physically. The chlorella pulls out the toxins and keeps you well. But on the long term, it helps you with the longevity issues with your mitochondria because it has the four antioxidants that can get into the inner membrane to protect it. And nothing else can get in there. And now I'm going to tell you why there is an inner membrane and why algae is the only thing that can really get in there to, to protect you. Now, remember I said algae was the first life on earth four billion years ago? Well, that, and it was a cyanobacteria. Um, before algae, before cyanobacteria, earth was just gas and water. I don't know what, nobody knows why this first cell started growing, but it did. <clears throat> then it generated ATP and it was an anaerobic cell. And after about a billion years, there was enough oxygen on earth that larger cells could start growing that were, that were aerobic. But at the meantime, the small anaerobic cells were having a hard time surviving and the big cells weren't generating ATP very well. So the big cell absorbed, engulfed the little cell. Now the big, the initial cell was cyanobacteria like spirulina. And then when it got engulfed by the big cell, 
the big cell didn't digest it. They just said, hey, why don't you generate ATP for us and we'll protect you from the oxygen. And that became mitochondria. It's sort of like if you have a, a friend who gets kicked out of their apartment and they say, hey, can I come and stay with you for a couple of days? And you go, oh, all right, fine. And then they do your laundry, uh, make your bed, pick up your, your uh, dry cleaning, do your groceries, make your meals. And you go, hey, stay forever. <laughs> stay longer. That's stay right. Longer. Yeah, That's no, I like exactly. the I like the analogy. And so I'll tell you why the, I was interested in, in your energy bits tablets, the spirulina and the chlorella is number one, I'm a big believer in alkalinizers. And, um, and very interestingly, I mean, one of the things that we're always trying to do is check our urine pH as a marker for cellular yeah. health and for cortisol and for, you know, uh, immune function and for food sensitivities and whatever else. It's a biomarker that's really important in so many ways. So that's one thing. Another part is that, you know, I recently moved in a uh, home in Dallas and there's a basement here and not many houses, maybe there's a hundred total in all of Dallas that have basements, but we had a rain recently and it flooded and I'm in my uh, basement, which is my recording studio. And, you know, like where there's floods, there's mold. So we're getting that we're underway to get that tested, but you can hear me getting a little congested here. And so, you know, taking the spirulina, taking the chlorella additionally has been very beneficial. Plus in my medical practice, when we were working with clients with mold toxicity, Chlorella was a supplement that we always would use. And I think that's a really important piece is with everything else that we do, it's, it's definitely a very important piece. And plus the, you know, clean product that doesn't smell terrible, you know, that's a really big thing. And that's easy to take and digest um, is critically important too. Yeah. So yeah, no, and I appreciate your science life. and yeah, and your work on this. And, Thank you know, you. it's yeah. a lot has gone into it. Well, tell our audience where, okay, if, I don't know if you have any closing comments, um, but we'll go we'll ahead. Just... You're such a good teacher, by the way, and I can <laughs> see how passionate you are. My audience can too. I wish I had even more time. I've got- yeah, a, That's okay. Uh, and I can always come back. I just, I, I know there's so, people are so sick and they're so confused and, and they're so afraid. And, and when you don't understand something that's confusing, contributes to fear. And so I take a great pride in helping this, you know, make something that looks frightening, less frightening. And so that you can, if you understand your body, people understand their cell phones better than they under, understand their body. So when you understand what your body needs, then it's a lot easier to give it what it needs and then to be healthy. Wellness does not have to be complicated. Uh, we can, we can, we can look after ourselves. If you have good instructors and doctors like yourself and good tools and products like what we have. So I just want to assure people that um, we are, I am so determined to help people. Uh, we do third party lab tests. We only sell through doctors and functional medicine and chiropractors. We don't sell through retail, although we do sell on our website and I'll tell you where you can get that. Our website is energybits.com, E-N-E-R-G-Y-B-I-T-S. And we have a 20% discount code for your community. Uh, it's Thank Dr. You. Thank Anna, you Dr. A-N-N-A, no space in between, Dr. Anna, no dot, nothing, just Dr. Anna. And that will get you 20% off any of the products. Again, chlorella is the one that's the wellness algae. Uh, we call it recovery bits. The spirulina, which is the energizing one that builds your immune system, or sorry, builds your uh, focus and your energy. Also, spirulina um, is beauty bits, which builds your skin and hair. And we have a fourth product called uh, Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two algae. So, and they come in large bags. We have really beautiful canisters that you can, you know, you just use them to shake the tablets out. So it's whatever, whatever you want, the, the discount code works on that. Um, and just come to the website anyways, because we write a very comprehensive blog every month, lots of science. So uh, we do want to educate people. Um, and I promise you, you will see a difference in your health. Try to take you know, 10 a day, if you can, five, even five is, is good. Um, but it's, it, it's very efficient nutrition and it, it, we have to put an expiry date on it, uh, which is usually two or three years, but it literally never goes bad. And what vegetable 
what what vegetable could you say that about? <laughs> so, so so true, so true. I mean, it works to help itself, right? It's its yeah. own longevity yeah. factory. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. I think this is really important. We talk a lot about mitochondria. You guys listening. Well, first of all, Catherine, thank you so much for being here on the Girlfriend thank Doctor you. Show. It's been great to connect with you again, and also thank you for the discount from our community for twenty percent off. You guys, Doctor Anna at EnergyBits.com. I've been using them myself and working on and this. We'll send you some more. Multi- Toxicity. Oh my God, please send me more. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and you know, the other thing too, is just there's a lot of power in the mitochondria. And when it comes to cellular health, there's a lot we talk about with anti-aging and biohacking. And we're going to use a man, take that chlorophyll and get in your infrared sauna yeah. and, you know, or take the, uh, chlorella and get into your infrared sauna and or red light. And that even potentiates the effect. Right. Yeah, right. So cool. Yeah. And, um, and, and just to really look at how we're taking care of our house, that we live the healthiest life that we can. And so again, thank you guys You're for being welcome. here. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you for my audience for showing up today and listening. Be sure to share this podcast and you're going to want to watch it. I mean, Catherine gave a great presentation. She had some images up and um, you can see that at my YouTube channel at The Girlfriend Doctor. Be sure to subscribe so you're first to be notified each time we uh, have a a new episode. So, you know, uh, you know, complementing your current regimen with what is your next right step? I think always compliment your current regimen with what is your next right step? What's your next right step for you? And this may resonate like, okay, it's worth a try. It's not that expensive. It's very powerful and it is the highest quality. So that's why I like to bring that to you. Plus understanding, you know, why the, why it's important to incorporate that into your daily regimen and um, into your lifestyle and see how that works for you. And let me know, because I don't recommend products that I don't use myself and I haven't evaluated the science on. I was a scientist before I became a physician. So the combination is like, you know, that is, that is critical to me. What is the clinical benefit and what is the science? It's behind every one of my products. It's behind the products I recommend. And so I really highly value your feedback too. So thank you guys for being here till next time.